Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions, your premier platform for real-time global insights. Well, this past weekend marked the eight-year anniversary of the worst outbreak in U.S. history in terms of tornadoes. We saw over 350 reports of tornadoes with a multi-day severe weather event that broke out in what we call Dixie Alley. That is the other part of Tornado Alley, which is right down here. I will never forget this map after seeing it the day after the event. These were the storm reports on April 27, 2011. 11, just highlighting the nearly thousand reports of severe weather, but it was all those red dots that many of us in atmospheric sciences will never forget. Well, this weekend we had a much different pattern set up. This is just looking over the last 72 hours here of total accumulated snowfall. And we had we, we talked about last week this event that was going to be coming right through this part of the country, bringing in some snow. We saw snowfall amounts ranging from an inch to some locations over four to five inches of snow, especially there in southern Wisconsin and northern uh, Illinois. And I'm just going to tell you something. Uh, this region here here and this region here, we've got more snow coming uh, in the next 10 days. We're going to talk about that in just a few seconds. Now, with those, uh, with that snow that came through here, look at what the temperatures did. We had a hard freeze in parts of Illinois and Iowa and Wisconsin right in through this area. We can still, of course, get these this time of year. We really don't truly get out of the woods for uh, the potential for a frost freeze event until we get past the second week of May across much of the North Central Plains and also across parts of the Midwest. So temperatures very cool in the early morning. But look, watch what Mother Nature is able to do. So just so you see here, this is where the snow was that we could still see on satellite. So some of this is clouds, uh, but you can see the snow right here. Uh, it's it's April though. We got some strong sunshine that comes in. So as I click play, let me get rid of those drawings here so you can watch this. It's kind of neat. As I click play, you'll watch the sunshine just erode that snow away. See it going away there? <laughs> and such that by the uh, time we got through the day on um, on Sunday here, we had got, almost gotten rid of almost all of it. But what do we see after that? Look at all of the, the thunderstorm activity we saw from Colorado through uh, you know the middle section of the country getting over into the eastern Corn Belt. And that's the main things we're going to have to talk about in this video. Because after last Last weekend system that kind of moved on off the northeast, finally bringing some rainfall here to the Carolinas. Uh, we saw the system sneaking down like this. Early in the morning on Monday, some strong to severe storms moving through parts uh, of Kansas here, moving over toward Missouri. And then, of course, over the weekend, we saw uh, several strong storms producing uh, hail, a lot of hail reports right there in parts of Texas. Well, in this forecast you're about to see coming up, it's this region right in through here that I am most concerned about. And this is the reason why. This is just taking a look at the flow of the atmosphere that we're going to be seeing throughout much of this week. In the upper levels of the atmosphere, we're seeing two things. We have a deeper trough sitting in this area. Area. We're going to see several little short waves kind of coming out of California, coming into northern Mexico, ejecting in here, but also several little short waves that keep rounding the base of this deeper trough that's in um, that's in Canada. Now, what I want you to see is this is the flow of the atmosphere that is centered around high atmospheric pressure about a mile above our heads. And what do we see? We see that right in through this area, this is where the winds stop going just straight out of the south like this, and they start to, to diverge. They start to move. They have to change course, change direction. And that is where our main frontal boundary is going to be throughout much of this week. And there's not a lot slowing this pattern down in the near term. So bigger picture here, what are we looking at? Well, over the last 30 days, that's the map that you're looking over here over on the left, 30 day percent of normal precipitation. It's amazing to think that while we've been absolutely soaked in some parts of the country, we do have a region in here that has actually been very, very dry. Uh, a lot of planting progress has happened throughout parts of northern Illinois, the northern half of Illinois, with the exception of some of the snow air covered areas. But look, parts of Missouri, Kansas, this region right in here in Nebraska, Iowa, you know, we've we've had some locations that have been been dry while it's been so wet around it. Well, what do we see coming up over the next five days? Remember, I told you it was this corridor right in through here that I was most concerned about because of that flow pattern. High atmospheric pressure is going to dominate here. California, we do have some scattered showers coming through a few times as these little short waves come right out of, uh, of, the, um, out of the Pacific and cut across your state. Uh, but on the back side of this, I'm talking about some snow in these areas that we just can't ignore this time of year. So putting it all together, just take a look here at your next five days in terms of temperature anomalies. You can see the effect of that cold air rounding that trough here and look at where the ridge sets up. And it's going to be the battleground, which is going to be right in through here where all the action is going to be. So just looking at the next five days in terms of temperature anomalies. Even if we stretch this out to the, uh, day six through ten, 
we continue to see the influence of that colder air. And I did see some crazy videos coming out of uh, uh, Alberta over the weekend of some extremely heavy snow, but we just aren't fully breaking down this pattern of having a ridge here, some sort of trough feature in Canada swinging around, and also these little subtle features that keep coming out of the Pacific. And that is why the week two precipitation anomaly forecast from the GFS model, and there is agreement with this in the European, is tending to want to keep a big section of the country uh, with these with this wetter bias and uh, that's uh, that's an important feature to see because we are desperately trying to get a crop in the ground and get some field work done and all that uh, you know meteorologists all over the country are having to tell you just like I am is that the pattern's active and the soils are saturated in a lot of places and we're having some trouble here okay let's dig into the details uh, you're gonna see over the next couple of days the all hazards weather map expect to see this area right in through here to have a whole lot more flood watches uh, and warnings at times also this region right through here we've already got winter storm watches, winter storm advisories, um, but it's going to be much closer to the mountains here. But right in through this area, as each system comes out, the flow is going to come back around, giving us some upslope flow. Uh, so the northern part of Denver, but then getting over there into Wyoming, parts of western Nebraska, western South Dakota, snowy. And then, like I said, we will be picking up some more snow right up in here as we get through the week. Starting us off early in the morning, we can already see the boundaries setting up just like this. And we had some very strong thunderstorms that moved through parts of Kansas early in the morning around 3 o'clock. So I imagine some of you are up early watching the video in that area simply because of that. And uh, multi-day rain event over the over the weekend here in parts of Illinois continue to keep things quite wet. So what are we looking at in terms of severe weather? Well, let's just start off the day on Monday. Um, after we have the first round of storms going through here, we can see that the system uh, that's coming out of California into kind of the, the uh, through the desert southwest into Texas, we're watching regions right through here, mostly a, a hail threat and some strong straight line winds. As we get into today on Tuesday, this has been the day I've been focused on for much of last week. Uh, we can see that because of the placement of that boundary, adequate wind shear and a bunch of Gulf moisture, we have a pretty large region there where we have a slight to enhanced risk. And look, you don't see much of a movement by Wednesday and where that corridor of heavy rain and severe weather is possibly going to be. So these are the region's storm prediction center. Again, best in the business. That's what they're looking out for. Let's take a look at what our high resolution model is picking up on. And this is going to start, I got to start this back on late Sunday evening. And as we click play, let's just watch it together. We can see here that we have multiple rounds of precipitation emerging just by the time we get to Wednesday. And that's just the beginning of this. If I just take you back to early in the morning on Monday, let's go right to about here. There's the squall line passing through parts of Kansas and Missouri, the, the broad shield of rainfall that's here, and then the snow that is on the northern side of this system through parts of northern Minnesota and, uh, and, and North Dakota here. And as we progress forward, we got snow from the UP and Michigan, actually the lower part of Michigan as well, but getting into northern Wisconsin and, and up into uh, Minnesota here. But look at the rain that's going to be going through parts of Illinois, Indiana, Missouri today. And that's just spreading right on across um, you know, the southern part of Michigan throughout the afternoon and evening hours on Monday. Now, as we get into Monday night, we're going to be watching the resurgence of moisture. Look at the snow that's going to be falling here at higher elevations. This is upslope uh, snow here into parts of Wyoming, getting back into western Nebraska and Colorado. You can see it right there. So this is why we have the winter weather advisors, winter storm watches out for this area, because in the overnight hours, again, on uh, Monday night into Tuesday morning, that's our main threat. But then look, see the, the open Gulf of uh, Mexico moisture just pushing into the middle section of the country. Widely scattered showers and storms early in the morning on Tuesday, but the real show gets going later in the day on Tuesday afternoon. So Kansas, you already saw a nasty squall line this morning. Uh, Eastern Kansas, you're about to see another one in through this same area. Now, many in this area, uh, even though we want to be getting a lot of field work done, are not going to complain about the rainfall because we do need this coming through. But you do see that on as by the time we get to evening, look at that squall line kind of stretching out there, pressing across Illinois, Missouri. And that's why we're watching this area, specifically this area for the strong to severe storms. Okay, uh, that was kind of our high resolution model look. Now, when we think about May, and I put this in the long range forecast, you gotta be checking out those long range forecasts. I'm pulling out the long range stuff in these short term videos and putting it in there. Well, this is what the wettest maze on record for the central region, and that covers a huge section of the country. I'm talking right in through here. This is what the pattern looks like. We tend to get something 
like this, which features a southeast ridge and multiple shortwave troughs that kind of keep swinging through the Intermountain West, ejecting onto the plains. That is the, how the pattern gets active for the month of May. Now, let me just show you what I'm watching here in the upper levels. We do have a trough feature here. We have a trough that's coming into Southern California, bringing in some rain and a ridge over Alaska. See that? And that puts a ridge here. And this is almost kind of just verbatim what I just showed you here. So if we play this forward, we can see each individual piece coming through. Getting us through early in the week, look at the establishment of the ridge over the southeast. Look at the trough feature elongating through here. What are we seeing? Multiple little shortwaves moving through the northern plains. You already saw one trough come out of Southern California here into the southern plains. And when those two things are in place, we just keep lighting up the central part of the United States. This is getting you out to Thursday, the weekend, you know, and what do we see? We go back to as we get into the 6th, 7th, 8th of May, we tend to just go back to this pattern that features this dominant southeast ridge and troughs coming through this part of the country. And when you see that kind of pattern as we go into May, it just says active weather for this section of the country. So that's it. Um, what are we looking at? Will we stretch this out with the European model? Well, let's just play this forward. Early in the morning on Monday, remember we were watching right through here with the snow on the northern side. Click play. Here comes the next big round on Tuesday. So we covered this pretty well in the short term. Let's now get out to Wednesday. Look at the look at the resurgence of moisture coming right back into the same area where that boundary sits, such that by Thursday through Friday, it's just repeated showers and thunderstorms over that area. Getting us toward the end of the week and weekend. This is now Friday evening. Next weekend, there's a little bit of model discrepancy about how the systems are going to be evolving next weekend. But if I just keep playing this, what do we see? We just keep saying the same story happening over and over again. Two separate storm tracks meeting in this area around a southeast ridge. And that just keeps this section of the country very active in terms of its weather. Now, what about the probability of picking up some more snow? So we're looking here just all the way up to next Monday morning, probability of getting another three inches of snow. We see that it's primarily confined uh, to parts of, um, you know, really parts of North Dakota and northern Minnesota. But because of that upslope flow with some of these systems, look at this. Get back into this section of um, Nebraska, South Dakota, and then, of course, into the higher elevations of Colorado and Wyoming. That's where we're going to be picking up the snow this week. Putting this all together, I just want to show you European model operational, just getting you through next Monday, main quarter precipitation here. This is the um, GFS. You see a similar thing. They have a little bit different look at what's going on with one system next weekend as it approaches the mid-Atlantic and the northeast. Uh, but of course, we'll have multiple chances to cover that throughout our week uh, in forecasting here. So if we put everything together, this is the national blended model, which includes the European, the GFS, and so many other models. Look at the dominance of the Southeast Ridge. I mean, there it is. And this corridor right in through here, expecting the very, very heavy rain and the flood threat will be a real thing to be talking about. If there are places that, that are be drier, it's Pacific Northwest, uh, potentially parts of, of Montana and North Dakota, at least a little bit drier than normal, uh, given the trajectory of the next few systems already after you got what you got over the weekend. And I just wanna show you something. Over the next 15 days, to show you how this pattern continues, I have the 15-day precipitation anomaly map from the European model, and I have over here on the right, this is from the G. GFS. And I, these two maps are basically a mirror copy of one another. They look almost identical here. So we're going to be continuing to deal with these heavy uh, heavy rainfall events and, uh, and what they mean in terms of planting progress. Well, I think we know the answer uh, to that. Now, the question is, does this continue? Does this continue throughout much of May? We have one feature that's going on that I'm keeping a very close eye on. Of course, we have the weak El Nino event, but uh, kind of adding to it is this feature here, the Madden Julian Oscillation. We came out quickly into phase two. We're now through phase three and we're moving rapidly to phases four, five, and six. Now, thankfully, these are warmer phases, which we'll be getting to with time here. But whenever we see the Madden Julian Oscillation do that, we just have broad upper level support over that area uh, for rising motion. And that's why we see when we look at the, the week leading up to the 25th of May, this area still has 
uh, that signature of having the, the, the heavier precipitation. Now, we're getting pretty far out here in the forecast, so I'm just looking for reasons why the model's picking up on this wet bias continuing through May. It's climatologically accurate. In other words, this is an area that lights up this time of year, uh, but still, um, the models are still picking up on the wetter than average bias. We'll keep a close eye on that. I want to finish up with one last thing here very quickly, just give you a quick global tour of what's going on. Uh, Europe, we're going to have some ridging finally over Western Europe and some troughing, so expecting a lot of cold air here and wetter than average conditions. Uh, Africa, uh, we do see that we're continuing to deal with the, the flooding rains from the tropical system here. And also there's a tropical system that's going up kind of the, the east coast of India that's worth noting. And because of the current El Nino event, look at the wetter than average conditions kind of stretching through this area. So this is impacting, of course, uh, the islands down here just north uh, of, of Australia. And finally, I'll just tell you something. We don't have much of a weather story coming out of, out of uh, South America here. Um, still a little bit wetter than average as we finish off a safrina crop, or at least let that safrina crop mature in, in Brazil. Uh, and overall, we just hear, you know, continual reports of good numbers coming out of South America. Okay, longer video there, but I want to take the time to explain to you what's going on. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. We at Nutrient Ag Solutions want to thank you for your attention. Hope you look forward to our next Ag Forecast coming out this week at my.nutrientagsolutions.com. Hope you all have a great week. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.